Lord Jesus, how wonderful is your name. Yes. The most powerful name in all the earth. And you deserve all the praises and all the honor and glory. Yes. For you are our God. Yes. You are our Savior. Amen. Our King. The everlasting King. And you will reign forever and ever, O oh Lord. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Yes. And let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And today, we will worship you. Yes. We will exalt your beautiful name. Yes. Lord. The name above every name. It is yes. Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Righteousness reveal the Son of Man, the Son of God, His kingdom comes. Jesus, redemption sacrifice. Now glorified, now justified, His kingdom come, and His kingdom. Righteousness, we and this 
Lift up your hands to the Lord, to our King, to our God, to our Savior. Let His kingdom come and reign to everyone's heart, to this place. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. Oh, you deserve all the praises of your people, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Speak Jesus. Jesus. Yes, you are wonderful, God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The zeal of the host of the Lord of hosts will do this. We can only imagine, we can only imagine the greatness of, of the kingdom of God. Imagine that we are all princes and princesses. Imagine that we can go near before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we can hear Him say to us and siguro if there is a camera there we can take selfie na but more than anything else He is God, He is King, He is awesome, He is glorious He is incomparable, His kingdom is unshakable His kingdom is forever and this is the amazing thing we belong to that kingdom. Yes. We belong to that king. Amen. Come on, let's worship him. Let's declare this. Come on, praise Jesus. In this kingdom will know no end. And his glory shall know no bounds. For the majesty. Just 
of silence and worship God in your own way, in your own lips, with a heart full of gratitude. Look up. We have hope. We have security. We belong to this great King whose kingdom never lasts. This kingdom will reign forever and it's the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. All of the things and all of the greatness of this world will trample down. But there is only one kingdom that will last forever. And that is the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of our God. And we belong to that kingdom. And Lord, we pray that your kingdom come, let your will be done in everyone's heart, in this church, in this nation, in the whole world. Lord, Sinasam ka namin, pinapapurihan ka namin, Amen. niluluwan hati ka namin. Yes. Sino kami, Panginoon, para pansinin mo at bigyan mo ng ganitong, ganitong katimpala ng iyong kaharian. Lord, one day we're gonna see you, we're gonna hug you, and yes. we're gonna worship you up close and personal. But right now, God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you reign right now in our hearts Amen. and speak to us the powerful name of Jesus. And right now we declare that all sicknesses will be healed in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. All worries and anxieties will be gone in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Lord, we just want to worship you and rest in your presence yes. as we commemorate, Lord, this day is a Sabbath day for us. A day to rest, a day to hear from you, a day, Lord God, to really love you and enjoy your fellowship. Marami pong salamat. Walk through the aisles of this church, oh Lord. Walk through every corner of our hearts and touch us and give us fresh revelation and powerful direction to obey you all the days of our lives. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God, our loving Father. We worship you, Jesus, yes. Lord, our great Shepherd, our great Savior. This is our prayer, our worship, our praise in the most powerful name of Jesus, our King, whose kingdom lasts forever. Come on, cross from Palapakan. We are in the church today. Yeah. Amen. Masaya pa tayo nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon? Amen. Masaya pa tayo kasama natin ang ating mga katabi? Yeah. Kasama? Okay, let's give them a warm welcome sa bawat isa. And let's sing together this song. I love the children and feel when I get together. God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with. God's wonderful people, what a sight just to see all the happy faces. Praising God in heavenly places, all the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. As we welcome one another in the Lord, the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. of us tonight, today as we hear the word of God. We can now take our seats. Ayan. Masarap sumayaw. It's really pleasant no, to sing and dance all together no, uh, with, with the dance team, with the praise team. And we are preparing for this uh, night's nice fellowship with the young people. So, may puro dance yung sayawan, kantahan, and everything. 
So we welcome one another. We welcome each other in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Cross World. So, sige po, we can now take our seats and um, we can be ready, no, and get ready to receive from the Lord. And let us welcome Pastor Al as he also introduces to us our guest for today. So, sige po, let's have a family, Crossroad family, welcome. Palakpakan po na. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good morning. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, magandang, magandang, maganda ka ngayon. Doon sa lalaki, sabi mo naman, guwapo ka pala sa personal. Kasi nakikita lang kita sa, sa FB. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, welcome po sa Cross World. Uh, mga kasama natin dito sa... May kawain bulakan at hindi naman sa online, no? So we praise the Lord uh, that God has uh, granted us this opportunity to worship Him together. So what a joy it is, no? To to really come together, praising the Lord, giving thanks to Him as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And now uh, this is uh, a fulfillment of uh, you know a prophetic word that was given to this uh, church that this place will be a house of prayer, a house of prayer for the nations. Amen ba? Isang bahay dalanginan para sa mga bansa. Dahil ngayon ay international tayo ngayon. No, Meron tayong mga kasama sa iba-ibang uh, lugar ng daigdig. No, we have friends from different parts of the world joining us today. And um, um, they are seasoned ministers. Um talagang theologians, educators, no? That God has been using all over the world. And right now, they are here in the Philippines to gather together as a board um, to plan uh, para po sa standardization ng ministry at ng theological education dito sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo. So, before I introduce the main speaker uh, for today, let me just introduce uh, his colleagues, no? Uh, and let me ask all of you to please stand up. So let's start with Paul here. <laughs> can, can you please come uh, here in front so that we, we can introduce you? This is Paul. He is from uh, South Africa. Can you greet them or say something? Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you and to worship the Lord with my brothers and sisters in the Philippines. Thank you for having us. Good morning, I'm Ruben. It's wonderful to be with you and we look forward to worshiping with you for, for this beautiful service. My name is uh, Lazarus Piri from Zambia. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, Richard Fleming, Canadian. When I left Canada February 6th, it was minus 29 Celsius. I'm not going home. Uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my name is Yip. I'm from Hong Kong and friends of having us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Ako naman si Al Termolo. Tagaubihan. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, we have here from different parts of the world. They are, you know, um, presidents of uh, theological institutions, no? Uh, missionaries, no? different parts of the, the world, from Hong Kong, from Canada, from Zambia. Lazarus is, uh, according to Dr. Cole, is uh, in the center of South Africa. So he is much in control of the whole, the whole continent. <laughs> and uh, Ruben here, he is the, uh, uh, I think the 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 president or the director of Reforma. You know, uh, the Reforma is the one that they're the the reason why they are here is because of Reforma. The Reforma, naman, ito yung um, organization na nagpo provide ng standards for uh, theological education all over the world. 
So I've been praying for that actually, and I, I thank God uh, to be able to meet uh, our friends from different parts of the world. No? So salamat po sa Panginoon. Thank you. Beka kasama silang dalawang Pinoy eh. Nasaan na yun? Si, uh, yeah, oh, please be recognized. Uh, nasa, na, nasa na sila? Ayan. I-welcome po natin ang uh, mga staff ni Bishop F. Tendero. No, mga kasama po sila. Ano, uh, salamat sa Panginoon sa paghahatid niyo sa kanila sa ating mga kaibigan. So I think you're about to give a special number. <laughs> ah, okay. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So for our um, for the word of God to be delivered to us by his servant, let me introduce him to you. So uh, Bishop Eftendero was the one who uh, who connected us. And uh, he requested that uh, we uh, um, we welcome the the team to Cross World. So our speaker is Dr. Manfred Cole. Uh, he has served in many senior roles in theological education, and has personally visited a total of 495 theological institutions in his academic uh, capacity. Uh, institutions in his academic capacity, he has published over. 120 books and articles and has received numerous awards and honorary doctorate degrees. During the course of his ministry, he established the Christian humanitarian organization World Vision uh, in uh, several European countries and founded Reforma, an institution that has set a global standard for non-formal theological education. He also founded the Galilean Movement. Ito yung bagong movement na uh, pinasisimula nila kasama si Bishop F. Tendero, which calls for an additional one million women and men for biblical ministry each year. So one million men and women in the ministry each year. He is a catalyst for the Global Integrity Network or GIN, an issue network of the Lausanne Movement and the World Evangelical Alliance. So Dr. Cole lives with his wife, Dr. Barbara Cole, in Nova Scotia, Canada. They have two married sons and six grandchildren. So I know that the Lord will bless us today uh, through the Word of God, through the man of God, Dr. Manfred Cole. What a privilege to be with you. And I hope and pray that God will speak, speak to all of us. <laughs> I have been in, that's still working? I have been in the Philippines at least 100 times. And one time was 46 years ago, 46 years ago, my wife and I, we came to the Philippines. We visited some projects in one of the islands. We made a marvelous time. We stayed in a simple guest house and during the night, we heard some noises. We heard someone crying. We thought maybe there was a family who had problems. I got up and opened the door, and there was a shoebox 
right in front of us on the floor, a shoebox with a newborn baby. It was just born during the night. And that little, little baby was crying. Four o'clock in the morning. So I picked up that box and took it to my wife and said, uh, we have another child in the family. Well, she was not too happy at that moment. <laughs> but there was a note in that shoebox that says, please take me. I want to be part of your family. Don't search for my mother, she is gone. I want to be yours. So we have a daughter in the Philippines. Well, at 4.30, we went to a Catholic place where there were nuns, and we got them out of bed, and we said, would you help me? We have a baby here, a newborn baby. We surely don't want that baby to die. And so they rushed and got a midwife and got a doctor out of bed, and they came to help that baby. They baptized the baby in the name of my wife's name, Barbara, and so there is somewhere in the Philippines a lady by the name of Barbara, she is 46 years old and, and two weeks. I don't know if she's here or not. We have never seen her again. We, we don't know where she is, but we have someone of our family that is part of you. So I have not only, we don't have only two sons and six grandchildren. We have a daughter in the Philippines among you. We are very happy to be part connected with the Philippines to share with you. And I was so happy to see the young people in your church participating in the worship service. I only hope and pray that it is not just a Sunday morning experience. It is a regular experience. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about the early church. The early church that is recorded in the book of Acts. You remember when Pentecost came, when the students of Jesus, the apostles, were preaching, the Holy Spirit was filling them with power from above, giving them assurance and comfort and wisdom. And the church grew. On one Sunday, 3,000 people came together. I would call it a mega church. Just imagine your church would be 3,000 people. And I'd like to spend a, this morning about half an hour, as is allowed by the pastor, to share how the early church operated. And we can learn seven lessons. Whenever I give a lecture, or whenever I speak, or whenever I write, I always have seven points. There's nothing magic about it, but when I preach and say I have seven points, people know when I come to point five, it's almost the end. So they, they, they can follow it. And when they go home, they can talk about the seven points that they should remember. And so we read in the book of Acts that one day, two of the leaders of that church they were still very young because all the disciples, Jesus himself, they were young people. They were not like me. I'm almost like a dinosaur. <laughs> they were young people in the 20s, in the early 30s, just like the Lord. I believe that most of the disciples, most of his 12 students were between 20 and 30. Maybe Peter was a little bit older. Just remember, the whole church, young people were in the leadership. No wonder Paul is reminding us again and again, respect the young people. Give them opportunities, give them chances 
to develop the gifts God has given them. So the two of them, Peter and John, it says, went up to pray. They went to the temple to pray. My friend, that's the first lesson we have to learn. We must make prayer a priority. Oh, I would love to have at least two hours to speak about what is prayer. See, prayer is not just a monologue. It's not just talking to God. It is talking and listening to God. They went to the temple to pray, and, and the scripture is very precise. It said, in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. Have, if you have been in the Middle East, in Palestine, in Israel, they have the morning activities. At noontime, they have their meal. And between 1 and 2.30, you take some rest. You go to the shade. You reflect. Take a, take a siesta, a little bit sleep. And then you begin, really, activity between 3 and 5 or 6. At 3 o'clock, at the most important time of the day, they went to pray. They were leaders of a congregation of two, three, maybe even three and a half thousand people. Can you imagine how busy they were? How much counseling they had to do? How many questions they had to answer? Sometimes we are so busy that we forget to take time for prayer. Make prayer a priority. It's number one. Take prayer a priority. And be sure that it is a prayer that you talk to God and then you listen to him. They went to the temple, and how many stories do we have where God spoke to the people in the temple, where God spoke to them? Usually we pray and pray and pray, and we say amen and go. That's not the kind of prayer that the Lord expects us to have, the kind of conversation that we should have with him. You remember Jonah. God spoke to Jonah what to do because he was listening. He didn't do what God told him to do. That's a different story. But we have to spend time to listen to God. Would you please make that a priority? I married almost 53 years. And when my wife and I, we talk, I cannot just talk to her and talk to her, and then I say, it's finished, and walk away. The second day, she will say, wait a minute, let me say something too. And I believe God is waiting to speak to us. God is waiting to speak to us through the scripture. Young people take time to look at the scripture and listen to God. So many young people I ask, what is the plan for your life? What is your future? Oh, I don't know, I don't know yet. Man, don't you have dreams? Don't you have your your brain working, using your gifts and talents and experiences, even as a young person. The sky is the limit with God on your side. I encourage all of you young people, have a prayer life that spends time to listen to God. Secondly, as they went to the temple, they found a guy lying there, a beggar. Oh, the Philippines has so many beggars. It's amazing. There was a beggar lying right in front of the temple at a place where they was hoping to get some, some coins, some money. How did he get there? You know how old he was? He was paralyzed. He could not stand. He was handicapped in a very severe way. There he was lying. If you know the scripture, he was over 40 years old. It is all recorded in the scripture. My friend, you have to read the Bible a little bit more carefully. 
For 40 years, he was begging. For 40 years, someone had to bring him and someone had to take him home. For 40 years, he was lying in the dirt and dust. He could not go to the bathroom. He could not, they could not change their clothes. What a mess, what a smell. Someone had to take him in the morning and someone picked him up in the evening. Are you involved in serving other people? Jesus said the, the greatest commandment, love God with all your heart and with all your, your soul and energy and with your mind, Jesus added, and take care of somebody else. I know you, you understand what I'm saying. But I'm asking you since last Sunday, for a whole week, did you serve someone? Did you help someone? Did you give a hand for someone? Did you smile at someone? Did you send a message of encouragement? Did you make a phone call? My friend, we have to be agent of God's love. We have to share it with other people. That poor guy, I like to call him poor Charlie, he was lying there every day because someone in the morning, two people had to carry that person and in the evening they picked him up, that smelly, filthy guy. And I'm sure they said many times, oh God, I hope that guy will soon die. We are so fed up with it. Are you serving somebody else? My friend, it is so important that we are getting involved to be Samaritans. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan, beautiful story, and Jesus in the end said, do the same. Open your eyes. Have a heart of compassion. Go where they are. Cover their wounds. Give away the best thing you have and put them on that beast, that, that donkey, or that bicycle, or that motorbike you have. And you walk and take care of him and pay for him. And she says, that, go and do the same. Last week you were here in church. Seven days have passed. Have you done Samaritan service? We are challenged. The early church was involved in a beautiful way. Read the book of Acts, especially the first chapters, how they served each other, how they cared for each other. Now comes a very, very important point. Number three, that man was asking for money. He wanted to have a donation. And Peter said, I'm sorry, we don't have silver and gold. We are not rich. We are the senior pastor of a mega church, but <laughs> we don't have the latest vehicle and we don't live in a penthouse. We don't have money. My friend, we have to learn that money doesn't solve the problems. Money is not the answer for the dreams of our lives. Please remember that all that we have, and I mean all that we have, and all that we are is not ours. There is no ownership among Christians. We are called to be managers of God's blessings. Please remember that all that you have your beautiful jewelry, your clothes, your shoes, your home, your family, your bank account if you have one, your vehicles, it's not yours. It's a gift from God. And all that you are, your voice, your citizenship, your family, your health, all is a gift from God. And one day, you have to leave it all behind, believe it or not. 
You can take nothing with you. The last shirt has no pockets. That's why I have an outfit so, with so many pockets. I'm still here, so I have pockets. <laughs> the last one has no pockets. You have to leave it all behind. And especially young people have to learn that money is not a solution. It is wonderful if God is blessing you, if God is helping you financially. It's fantastic. I remember when I was a little boy, I was very, very, very poor. I was in the midst of the Second World War. That's why I'm almost a dinosaur. I remember my mother crying because she has nothing to feed us. My brother and sister, we were three. We had to live on grass. I remember a special tree that a bark we cut off to make a soup. I know what it means, starvation. And I'm very happy and thankful that that time is behind. But I also remember that silver and gold money is not a solution. It is the love and the kindness and the relationship that you have with people. So don't build your future on silver and gold. Number four, <laughs> Peter and John said, but what we have is more than silver and gold. We give you the power of the living God. We give you the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you something that is much, much more than all the wealth and all the coins that you plan to collect. Speaking about my childhood, I had a grandma. We called her Oma. She was a dear lady. Whenever we, I had a birthday or at Christmas, I got some very, very beautiful gifts from her. The best gifts I ever received in my life. I was looking forward to the gifts from her. Because every time she gave me a piece of paper and said, dear boy, my gift to you is I will tell you 10 stories about Jesus. Oh, I jumped on her bed and I wanted to hear a story. It is more important than giving another toy, another gadget, another thing that after a few weeks or months you put in the closet or forget it or throw it away. Give something that is valuable, like we learned from, from these two church leaders. I give you the power of the living God. Tell the children, tell the grandchildren the stories of Jesus. Let them sit down and you tell them a story and ask them to memorize the key passage. And then you pray with them. I like when fathers take their little daughters for a, a date and really have a wonderful time, especially when they talk about spiritual issues and close with a word of prayer. My friend, we have to share within our family, with our friends, more about Jesus. I was so excited to see these young people jumping around or whatever they call it. Uh, it, was, it was beautiful. I hope they are jumping around in front of their friends too and talk about Jesus to them and be a witness. Peter and John said to that beggar, we have no money. Money is not the most important thing. The most important thing we can give you and the power of the river, Lord Jesus Christ. Get up. And a miracle took place. So many people ask me, where are the miracles today? My answer is, open your eyes. And you see them all around you. 
I hear people saying, oh, I have a wonderful doctor who helped me with that particular sickness. I take that medicine or that kind of food and I'm getting so much healthier. Isn't that a miracle? Don't you begin to praise God for that? Not just the doctor and the medicine? I almost had an accident this morning. But man, I have a Toyota and the brakes are good. <laughs> it was God who prevented that accident. And I should praise him. And on and on we have miracles all around us. Yes, there are some special miracles. They're even still today. But we have to open our eyes and we see miracles all around us. We must make the relationship that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ a priority. Make him the first and all the other things will be added. All the things that we need. We are managers of God's grace. We are managers of God's gifts and his blessings. So that man, for the first time, can you imagine for the first time in 40 years, he could stand up. He was always lying, and he was always looking up, hoping that he would get a coin or a smile or, or maybe something to eat. Now, for the first time he could stand, he was jumping like crazy. You think you boys and girls here you, 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 you were jumping. You should have seen him. He was jumping three times as high. He could not believe that he could stand, that his feet could hold him. Incredible. And what did he do? He went straight to the television station to have an interview. He went to the newspaper to have a, a write-up and a photo of his. The first thing he did, my friend, point number five, the first thing he did, he went to the temple to praise God. All we have to learn to say more thank you to God. There's a story in the Bible. Ten people came to Jesus. And they all had leprosy. They all were sick. And Jesus touched them. And only one, one came back and said, thank you, it was a Samaritan. Incredible. It was a Samaritan who fell down and said, thank you. We have to say more thank you to Jesus. Ten times more than what you right now. Make thank you for Jesus your priority, not just in church during the whole week. Just imagine the students in your class, if they see you saying more thank you to Jesus. And to sing a song to praise God, not just being quiet and being withdrawn. Open up. Let them see that you belong to Jesus. Don't care about the consequences. Jesus is on your side and everything is possible. Oh, my time is running out. And I only have five points done. <laughs> I know in the Philippines it's a, it's a democratic system. Uh, do you allow 12 more minutes that I continue? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, raise your hand if you're in favor yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Who is against it? <laughs> <laughs> have 12 more minutes to finish, finish point six and seven. So he went <laughs> with these two leaders into the temple. That guy was so excited and so happy in the church, in the temple. They have a tradition to be quiet. It's usually a little bit dark. And everyone was shocked when that person came in. Be quiet, be quiet. And the more they asked him to be quiet, the louder he was shouting, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and jumping again. Hallelujah, I'm healed. Hallelujah. God touched my life. 
we have to be a much more open witness that Jesus touched our lives. Oh, I like to see people in church, in the worship team. I see people standing up and raising their hands and, and praising the Lord and shouting for joy. It's not just in the, temp in the church, in the temple. It's in our daily life. We have to be a witness. We have to reach out to others. People should see and experience what God has done with us. Two weeks ago, I took some time to write a letter, a personal letter to our granddaughters. We have three grandsons and three granddaughters and they are just finishing college. And so I thought I should write a personal letter to them from their grandpa. And I call them dear Clara and the other one dear Lily. I call them dear sweethearts. I want to share with you what it means to demonstrate God's love. To make him the priority, not just on Sunday, not just in your quiet time, but people should see in your face, in your, your action, that you are a redeemed person. We have to demonstrate. Does someone of you ladies have a little mirror in your pocket? Pocketbook for someone? Or all, all the ladies, usually they have a little mirror to see how beautiful they look. Do you have, someone has one? Yeah? Why don't you look? Do you have one? Bring, bring one to me, please. Yeah, yeah, that's... You have a little mirror. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you. She's running away. Beautiful, beautiful. Even a powder box, everything. I just want to see the mirror. Beautiful. I found one in my mother's. When I was a little boy, I found a mirror. We were very poor. We had no toys. But I found a mirror. Then I discovered when the sun is shining and the mirror is reflecting the sunlight, you can put it in someone's eyes and you can blind them. <laughs> oh, that was a fantastic game, especially if it's the policeman who directs the traffic. <laughs> Within minutes, you have a chaos, but you have to be able to run fast afterwards. But it's a beautiful, beautiful toy I discovered. Later on, I discover that you and I have to be a mirror. People have to see in us the reflection of God. We have to learn to reflect God's love. People should look at us and say, what's happened to you? How come you are smiling? How come you're so happy? What an opportunity to talk about Jesus Christ and what he can do for everyone. Be a witness to everyone. That's the way you make disciples. People look at you and they want to see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit reflecting in your life. That man, that poor Charlie, he was for me one of the most exciting missionaries because he demonstrated that God touched him. And then it says, number seven, very beautifully, the whole town, the whole city of Jerusalem, all the people, they talked about it. Just imagine if all of us here would be a reflection of God's love I tell you, part of Manila would change. There's a revival going on in some parts of the world. I hope there's a revival soon in the Philippines. The people talk about the living God. 
But they come and ask for forgiveness. Where they kneel down and say, God, forgive me. Give me that beautiful statement. My daughter, my son, your sins are forgiven. I died for you on the cross. Be a witness to the uttermost parts of Manila or wherever you are. I don't even know where I am here. It's part of the Philippines, I know. My friend, we have to be involved in a major, major revival. In every church I go to, I challenge, especially the young people, the ones who get excited on Sunday morning, please do that wherever you live, in your family. Have you brought someone along? to the church today? Did you ask someone in your family, a brother or sister or uncle or aunt or somebody else, please come along? You will experience something unique. That church should multiply every couple of months. You should have four, five, six services. It is up to us to be the hands and the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, the heart and the sparkling eyes reflecting God's love. So that's a beautiful story as we look at the life of the early church. Let me summarize it. We have to make prayer a priority. Not prayer, just talking a prayer to listen, a prayer to have a dialogue with God. A time you, you really struggle with God, God, how come? And, and you talk with him, and he knows and understands. Make pri- prayer a priority in your life. Secondly, we have seen from the early church that they took care of needy people. They took care of people who are in misery, They took care of people who need help, who brought that poor Charlie back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And how many times? 40 years, just imagine. Be involved in Samaritan service. Make that a priority in your life to help others. Number three, we have learned that in the early church, money was not the, not the most important thing. Honesty was more important. You know, there was persecution in the early church, but the first two people in the early church, they died because they were lying, they were cheating about money. It's quite an important lesson we have to learn. Money is not a solution. All we need it. I know. Money is important. We have to buy food, we have to do all the things, but it is secondary. More important, share the power of the living God. Share the power of Jesus. Talk to other people about Jesus. i like to see you making that a priority. And then look around and see all the miracles that take place. That man stood up. Peter and John took him by the hand and they lifted him up and he was, was healed. Today, healing is taking place in your my life and my life. I'm sure there were some miracles in your life this morning already. <laughs> every morning that you wake up, every morning that someone took care of you, every morning, it's a miracle. And we have to learn to praise God more, to make praising and being thankful a priority. Ten times more than we do right now. Ten times more. By the way, (laughs) young people, say more thanks to your mom and to your dad. Say more thanks to your husband and wife. It is the most healing medicine that you can share with other people just to say thank you. 
and smile and shake hands or whatever you do. Just say thank you. And say thank you to God. And go to the temple and worship and praise him. Not only on Sunday. And you begin a revival, a renewal in the entire community as it happened here. That's the early church. Just one afternoon in the early church described in that beautiful passage. Now usually I'm reading the Bible text at the end, not at the beginning. Because it's so powerful. It's the word of God. And I asked one of my colleagues to come up to read very slowly the Bible text and we all stand and listen to the word of God. Let's stand. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves as we listen to your word. Help us to set the priorities straight in our lives. Open our hearts and minds that we understand what it means to have priorities, putting you first, and everything will be added. I pray that you will bless us. I pray that you will touch each one so that we can go forth to reflect you in the way we act, in the way we talk, in the way we look, to reflect you just as the mirror reflects the sun, that people recognize the power of the living Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
let us continue to know the power of Jesus at work in our lives today. Let us take the challenge to be an Acts people, an Acts church like Peter, John, the apostles of Jesus who were relentless to really give Jesus to all the people. Let us just be quiet before God and as the keyboard plays and as we worship and, and receive the power of the Holy Spirit, appropriating his word into our hearts. Let us first thank the Lord. Let us thank the Lord ten times more than what we did yesterday. Can we do that? Can we thank the Lord? Can we count on the blessings, His goodness, His kindness, His love for us? We are like that paralytic man, that paralyzed man. But our lives became beautiful because someone through the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit reached out to us. But in everything, with all the responses that we need to give right now, first and foremost, let us praise God. Let us give Him the honor. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Can we reach out to God and thank Him. Thank Him. Open your mouth. Pasalamatan lang natin ng Diyos. Salamat, Panginoon. Salamat po. For 40 years, Lord, or bumibilang ng taon ang aming buhay na nanilimos kami, naghahanap kami ng tulong, umaasa kami sa mga tao. For so long a time, Lord, we've been waiting for help, Asking people to guide us, take care of us, and we miss a lot about you. But Lord, right now we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Ito pag-ibig mo na dumating sa amin. Pinulut kami. Pinigyan kami ng himala, panginoon. Miracles after miracles, Lord. And you deserve all the praise and adoration. Come on, Crossroad Church. Let us feel our hearts. Let us feel this church. Let us let us offer thanksgiving, praises, yes. prayer to God with the club offerings, yes. with the hallelujah. hallelujah. Salamat. Yes. Salamat, Panginoon. Yes. Salamat po. Salamat, pinulot mo kami. Salamat, pinagaling mo kami. Salamat, tinuturuan mo kami. Salamat, Panginoon, sa araw-araw ginagapayan mo kami. Salamat, Panginoon. Salamat po. We receive miracles from you, Lord. And we thank you for the future and for the days to come. That you will do mighty things continuously in our lives. Thank you. Thank you for the people. Thank you for the people you have used for our lives. Thank you. You're worthy to be blessed. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Come on, just sing together with a praise team. Jesus, the name above every other name. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Let us declare this, God, because we're blessed, we're saved, we're rescued by you. Holy and now we're going to worship you. No we're going like to serve you. you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in one yes, Lord. Show me who you are and feel Let this be me our with your heart and need Let us demonstrate the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Me. Hallelujah. Come on, let this be our prayer. Jesus. 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Let's be Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Oh, we receive you, Jesus. Worthy of every breath we could ever be. We thank you. We praise we you for you. We glorify you, Lord. And we give our life. receive the challenge to be a good Samaritan this week. Yes. To be mindful of people. Amen. To be mindful of the people around us. Yes. Kahit isang tao lang at random. Can we ask God right now, God, equip me with courage. Equip me with compassion. Give me Jesus so that I can give Jesus to others. Money is not a problem. There is no excuses. There is no excuse and there are no excuses in blessing a person. As long as Jesus is with us, let's just open our mouth and say, I give you Jesus. Let us go to someone who is sick and give Jesus to them. Let us go to someone who is in need of tuition fee and let's give Jesus to them. And let us go to someone who is troubled and let's give Jesus to them. If this is your prayer, Lord, use me. Use me. Gamitin mo ako just like Peter, John, James, and the rest of the apostles as I receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, make me your church this week. Make me compassionate. Make me, Lord, your disciple in action. God, this is my prayer. Can we do that right now? Can we put our, our hand upon our heart and say to the Lord, Lord, with all sincerity, with all, with all humility, please use me, God. Send me. I want to give you Jesus. I want to I wanna give you, Lord Jesus, to, to my classmates, to my office space, to my, to my household, God. To the people, Lord, in the jeepneys, in the transport, wherever you bring me, Lord, help me to bring you. Come on, people of God, pray this to the Lord. Quicken our spirit, God. Quicken our souls, Lord. Help us to go out from our comfort zones for one person at a time, Lord. We can bless people. We can demonstrate your love. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. Come on,
We long for wonder. Amen? We want to see the wonders of God again. Amen. We yes. want to see miracle after miracle. We want to see the move of God. Yes. But before Peter, John, and the rest of the apostles did these great miracles, they have first received the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right? Yes. Amen. They have received the touch of the Lord. And as Dr. Cole mentioned to us that, wow, we praise God there are young people in the house. Reverend Cole, could you please pray for our young people in the house? All the young ones, can you please come here at the altar? And we will be asking the Lord right now to, to fill you with His Spirit. That you will not just pray and just read the Bible, but you will have this depth of desperation. God, I want to hear you. And just like Peter, James, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 20s, God, I want to reach out to many. Lord, this is my time. This is my moment. And with the rest of our pastors and the missionaries here, can I ask you to please pray for our young people? Hallelujah. Come. Young people and all the young adults, the young at hearts, can we have this moment to receive the power of the Holy Spirit that we will no longer be ashamed and we will no longer be inhibited and afraid to speak about Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit come. Come closer, young people. Come closer. Heavenly Father, this is a very special moment. A special moment in the lives of every person, young or old. We want to dedicate ourselves. We want to be yours. We want you to touch us. We want you to cleanse us. You want us to fill us with your spirit so that we can go forth to shine and to demonstrate what it means to follow Jesus. Lord, I like to dedicate all these young people and everyone in this church to be a missionary because every Christian should be a missionary and every non-Christian sh should be a mission field. We don't have to go to the ends of the earth. We can begin right now. Let us be a missionary today, the people around us. Let us be a witness tomorrow, wherever we are. Lord, use us to be your hands your feet because we want to go in the power of the living Lord we want to rejoice we want to say thank you again and again for what you have done for us and so we want to share it with others not just in talking but in demonstrating who we are with a shining face that people see you in us I pray, Lord, that right now is a moment in everyone's life of rededication, receiving your touch. Come, O oh Lord, touch us, we pray, and bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. We want to be channels of blessings. Thank you, Lord. You are so good. And each one of us will take now a moment of rededicating their lives to serve you.
Amen. Be received, God. Thank you so much, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now for the young people, Lord. We will never be the same again, Lord. Yes. We will go forth from this place, Lord, with all your power, your glory. And we will be amazed, Lord, with how you, you reveal yourself to us as we pray, as we read your word. As we become mirrors, Lord, reflection of who Jesus is. Come on, young people, just worship the Lord, honor Him, thank Him. Receive, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no one like Hallelujah, Lord. You. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and need me in your love to those around for the last time come on Holy, there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and need me in your love to those around me. And to that we say, Amen. 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 Glory to Jesus. We can now take our seats. We invite everyone to have a moment of silence as we answer these reflection questions. What are the important lessons you have received today? Make it very personal. Ano po ang mga mahahalagang paalala ng Panginoon sa inyo ngayon? Na let us make Him our priority. Let us make God and everything about God our priority. So what are the most important lesson, lessons that you have received today? And number two, what specific actions would you take to be a disciple of Christ at least for the next seven days? Let us just have this um, quick response to the Lord. In the next seven days, beginning today, after the church, at the, wherever God would bring us to, na po, isipin natin, Lord, you have here in my heart and I have so much to share to people. Pero, specific lang po. Let us do this for the next two minutes.